there was a presentation at ASCO last year. I think I believe it was by the MD Anderson group where they described this this pseudo progression where where, where the the mediastinal adenopathy actually looked worse. But it you know and obviously we get concerned about disease progression, although it's pretty quick disease progression. Um, and they de demonstrated that even in these scans, that uh, actually, if I remember the scans correctly, the PET scans and stuff look pretty, pretty frightening uh, in terms of bringing that patient to the OR. But yet, you know, they they found that this was more reactive adenopathy and not 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 pathologic ad adenopathy. Have you, any experience or any any perspective on that from 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 your vantage point? I can comment a little bit. They, you know, they referred to it as nodal immune flare, and they actually saw it in 10% of those patients, and that was Nevo versus Nevo Epi, and I, I think it was similar in both arms. The take-home point there is that, um, and we've seen it in the nodes, and we've seen it a couple times in the lungs. At the same time, each neoadjuvant group has seen a couple cases of progression, and so to me, the take-home is really biopsy everything. If you see progression on the PET scan, don't assume it's one thing. Don't assume it's just reactive disease either. Really critical to biopsy and know what you're dealing with. And then, Stephen and Roy, any experience in, in, in that uh, area? I've shared several patients with some of the, the Hopkins groups. And um, yeah, we, we've seen that it, it takes a, a trained eye to recognize that. While the surgical complication rates were fairly low, you're talking about highly trained surgeons, you're talking about uh, centers with a lot of experience. And as you know, neoadjuvant immunotherapy approaches become more integrated into standard care, um, you know, right now only done through trials, but it's going to take some education so that uh, we don't assume someone has progressed when really they're actually having a great response to treatment and where we don't forego surgery when we really should be pushing forward. So it's going to take a little bit of re-education, a little bit of retraining uh, to understand that there are some atypical response patterns here. Yeah, all I can add is it speaks to the need for the multimodality tumor board and Discussion in these cases very carefully with your surgeon, your pathologist, and your pathologist. Well, thanks to all of you. This has been a fabulous, rich, and informative discussion. So, before we close the program tonight, I'd like to get some final thoughts on this uh, early stage non small cell lung cancer from the resectable adjuvant setting to the kind of Pacific setting, if you will. So, I'll start with uh, doc Dr. Herbst. Well, I'm, I'm excited, Mark. You know, it's been 23 years now since the advent of EGFR inhibitors, and we've seen them used in the most metastatic unselected setting to selected with EGFR mutations discovered to more active and less toxic drugs like asimertinib, and now we're seeing them used in the uh, adjuvant setting. Still work to do, but very promising uh, early results that I believe are practice changing. Immunotherapy the same. We're using it in the earliest stages of disease. The one thing I think we have to think about with immunotherapy is we have to learn from the targeted therapy realm. We're using immunotherapy in all patients, but clearly uh, we need biomarkers. We need to find those patients in whom single immunotherapy works best, some might need combinations, and early stage disease is gonna be the perfect place to find that because we're gonna get tissue, and we're gonna understand it. But the progress has just been overwhelming, and who benefits the most are patients. Thanks, Roy. Kristen, your final thoughts? I'm really excited about moving the needle in our stage three uh, unresectable patients. The Pacific was a game changer. I think in the years to come, we'll have a lot of data about how to optimize the synergy between radiation and immunotherapy, um, and even moving targeted therapy into the stage three setting with the LORA study that's ongoing. And I think that targeted therapies and immunotherapies are really moving the needle for curable disease, and that's really exciting for our patients. And then Dr. Liu? I think what we're seeing happen is our standard of care rapidly changing for stage three unresectable, for resected EGFR positive, soon for uh, preoperative setting for, for resectable non-small cell lung cancer. And as our standard of care changes, I think it's important to keep referring patients to those trials. While these adjuvant and consolidation therapies have significantly improved outcomes, there's still a lot of room for improvement. So building on those as a backbone, sort of taking the next step beyond these studies will continue to be really important. Brendan? Well, I agree with all my colleagues. It's an incredibly exciting time in lung cancer and in early stage lung cancer in particular. I'm particularly excited that really the science has led us to where we are and that it's uh, developed all these pathways that we now have to treat patients. I think the data that you heard presented really puts the onus on surgeons and others involved in staging these patients to stage them well, to think about testing for molecular alterations, and to really have multidisciplinary consults on every early stage lung cancer patient because there's just so many options available now. 
Yeah, you know, I must say when that uh, press release came out looking at the 2017 uh, reduction in cancer mortality and kind of lung cancer led the way, uh, it was, you know, personally, and I'm sure all of you felt it, it was um, kind of a uh, because when, at least when Roy and I started in this business and, 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 and others, it was a pretty nihilistic uh, disease setting where therapies uh, were not that effective and many felt it wasn't a very treatable disease. But now we're at a time where we led the way in the reduction of uh, cancer mortality. So it, it, it's very gratifying. I want to thank all of you guys uh, for joining me today. I want to thank our viewing audience. We hope this OncLive peer exchange discussion uh, in this arena was useful and informative today. Thanks for joining us.